Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the second episode of Sandbox Mode. In case you missed the start of the series in the last episode, we started off by making a really realistic looking gift shop. It's connected to the entrance, so realistically, this is going to be the first thing that guests see when they come into the zoo, and the last thing they see before they leave, so we wanted it to look really nice. There's plenty of toys and merchandise. If you like our custom entrance, it's on the workshop. That's the main goal for this series. Everything I make is going to be up there. This one's simply called Custom Entrance. Today is going to be a very simple and basic episode, although it's one of the most important ones. We're going to be working over here to the right side of the zoo, and making a very small little food court that's going to go right in front of the first exhibit, which we're going to be making in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe! We're getting close to a thousand! Starting off the build, the restaurants I decided to open up were a hot dog squad, in an energy drink stand. I think it's called Gulpy Energy. I forget specifically. Anyways, the reason I decided to build it right where I did, kind of on the back of the entrance, is because we're actually going to use the back of these buildings for something later on in the video once we extend the path a little bit. We're simply going to be using the grid to throw a little facade around these buildings first. I think that's the easiest way. Use the grid, just get a basic shape and structure, and then detail it afterwards. We're going to be stealing the exact same color and design for the roof that we used before. We're literally just going to grab them, copy and paste them over, and use the exact same materials. We want everything in this zoo to look connected after all, and what better way to make it look connected than by using the exact same design for every building in the plaza. I thought it was a good idea. Saved a lot of time, too. I wouldn't really call it lazy, just strategic intelligence. In case you missed episode 1 of the series, the main goal of this zoo, besides putting every single item on the workshop, is going to be the little details. Everything in this zoo needs to have a purpose, even if it's not actually functional. For example, pretty soon I want to add a security room that has monitors that can tap into all of our cameras to keep the residents at the zoo safe. We're going to have that, despite it not actually working in the game. Just like these gutters. If it rained in real life, these gutters would protect the roof from leaking and get the water down safely. We're going to have things that make sense in this zoo, despite not always being functional. That's the main thing I really want to try here and hone my detailing skills to a masterful level. Also, this is kind of off script, but check out this little glitch that I found. I have no idea what caused it, actually. I was just placing these gutters down, copying and pasting, then this random grid showed up. No matter what I did, I couldn't actually get rid of it, so I had to save and quit the world. I was kind of paranoid that nothing would actually save, but luckily it did, and everything was alright. And if only Planet Zoo had loading screens that fast. Everything's all good, though. Back to the video. This is the part in the build where I kind of didn't have a plan. Going in, I knew exactly that I was going to replicate the gift shop and entrance style with the gutters, limestone, and wood texture, but after we did that, I had no idea. So at this point when I was finishing placing up the gutters, I was kind of lost. One thing that I really wanted to do was have recognizable things in-universe. Take Hot Dog Squad, for example. In Planet Zoo's universe, I'm thinking that this would be as iconic as, like, McDonald's. And you can't have McDonald's without the famous yellow arches. So I figured I had to put the logo of Hot Dog Squad and Gulpy Soda on the building. That was just a given. After that, I threw out some air conditioning units just because you gotta have your staff happy and what happy staff doesn't want to have AC and 90 degree heat in the Midwest. After that, I added some more very basic details like some power outlets and even some doors which we actually got rid of later because I wasn't a fan of the way I had to augment the path. We'll get to that in time though. For now, just ignore that. After adding in all those details, we then had to figure out how to get the water from the roof that would be collected in the gutters down to the collection system on the floor. In order to do that, we used some of these longer gutters that anchor into the building, and then used one of these ones that bend at about a 45 degree angle and put it down. After that, I realized that I actually didn't put it out far enough, so we had to fix it. In order to fix it, we anchored it completely into the ground, and then used an optical illusion like this to make it look like it's actually not into the ground entirely. But now we have little brackets to where the gutters need to be connected to something. I wasn't really sure how to fix this. Rocks are too uneven and jagged. But then I remembered that we actually made something that would be perfect for this in the last episode. I thought this would be kind of cool as a bench or something, but then I decided it might be a great idea to put this right in front of our buildings here. This way, it wouldn't necessarily be a bench, but it would also break up the texture while still fitting in, which is one of the hardest things you can do. Adding a completely new color to a build palette 
can be extremely difficult, but if you have the color matching a building that you already made that shares the same palette, it'll fit naturally, because you took it from a building where it already works. I really like to do this, and now we know that these cinder blocks gel well with our general build palette. So any building that we use these planks, that limestone roof, and the tiles, we know this will work well for a little accent block if we need some more details. I decided to add this staff path there to give a little bit of room to go to the door, but eventually I got rid of the door entirely, like I said before, so that's not too important. Anyways, now, there's kind of a giant gaping hole where guests can just walk over some grass to get into the zoo. I decided to copy and paste this fence over to keep it pretty consistent. After that, I copy and pasted some of the plants that we already had down, just to get it a little bit more detailed up. I'll come back through here later with some more details at trash cans, benches, whatever you need for a little plaza. But for now, it's pretty safe and nobody will be able to get in, especially after we put our security cameras down. We talk about it fairly often in franchise mode, but since this is a new series and we've actually gained a lot of new subscribers lately, welcome to the channel by the way, I'll go over layering again. Layering is easily the most important aspect of building in any video game, whether that's Minecraft, Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, whatever you want. You have to learn how to layer if you want to be good. Effectively what layering is, is what we just did with the concrete right there, right before those little wood slabs. Just have two different materials. One holds the other one back. It adds depth, it adds color variation, it adds everything that you need. We'll go more in depth later with a more extreme example later in the video, but for now, just remember, if your builds look a little bit monotone and bland, try adding a little bit more detail around the back with some layering. This is a perfect example of layering here, actually. You'll see we have this concrete cinder block type material, and then we have the wood on top of it. In order to blend those two materials in, we can come out in front of it with some more wood. That way, it looks natural and it all flows really nicely. Now I decided that we actually needed to have some overhang, because right now we need some depth on the build. The front of it is simply just a flat wall, and that's not gonna do. I decided to add a little overhang, kind of an awning type deal, where we're just gonna use some wood rotated at a 15 degree angle up, and then we're gonna put evenly spaced planks along the X axis, and then we'll come back, rotate this completely 90 degrees, and just place them evenly throughout. I wanted to use a cloth or something to make it completely covered to give some real shade, but I couldn't find anything straight that looked really nice. I think this will work perfectly fine though. I experimented with some colors, went through white, went through a few others, and also I got a comment in the last video that said if I hold Y I can completely change the axis and not have it going down at a 40 degree angle. Shout out to whoever made the comment, I'm sorry I forget your name, but that really did come in clutch. Anyways, I'm really happy of how this little awning turned out. I briefly mentioned it before in the last video as well, however this is where we're going to truly discuss layering, which as I said also, is the most important thing in building in any video game. Effectively what it is, is taking a material that looks similar to what you're building with, and simply just placing something else on the outside of it. This way you get the layer effect. See how this looks completely different than the vertical planks on the front, despite there being the vertical planks underneath. This is how you can make completely custom textures that nobody else has access to in the game. Well, obviously they can make it themselves, but this is still custom completely to you, unless you take it from somebody else's video. Which, by the way, if there's anything you like in this series or anything on my channel, feel free to take it. I'm not going to get crazy over copyright or anything. However, if you do take something completely for straight, copy a thumbnail or a build completely, if you want to give some credit, I'm not going to stop you. After I finished layering the outside of the staff area, I then decided to come in and extend the path a little bit. We're using the exact same concrete or limestone texture, I forget specifically, I think it's limestone. But anyways, we came through and extended it a little bit. Eventually we're going to add an entire road and parking lot back there, but that'll be much later on. Remember how I said I wanted to do some real life marketing in this game? We added a sign for the gulpy soda to get people excited to come drink it as soon as they get in the zoo. It's on the outside though, so people will get thirsty in their head. This is how marketing in real life works. You place the breadcrumbs right before the final attraction. Anyways, I wanted to get a really cool entrance thing that people could take a picture by, so I got a bunch of animals that I have plans on adding in this zoo. 
For now, it's just basic stand in North America animals. We'll probably replace some of these with the African and Grassland animal packs coming later, because I really want to add all of those animals into this zoo, but for now, these guys are going to be a good stand-in. And who knows, we might keep it like this. But I figured this would be a really cute area where guests could come and take pictures before or after leaving or entering the zoo. My original plan was to try and make those things, I forget what they're called or if even they have a name, but you know in a zoo or a sporting event where there's like a cardboard cutout and you can put your face through it and it looks like your face is on the animal's head? I kind of wanted to make something to that effect, although I couldn't really figure out how to do it, so I had to cut it. For now, a simple welcome sign with a picture of animals is going to work. I can really see kids and adults taking pictures here. To me, it's little details like this that make your zoo truly unique. Realistically speaking, anybody can make a food court, anybody can make a gift shop. You might not make it as good or detailed as some other people, but anybody can do the basics. However, what makes your zoo into a zoo that you made personally are the little details that you add and the little world building elements that you have. So if your zoos feel a little bit bland and you're jealous of why other YouTubers can make things that you think are better, first of all, don't discredit yourself. I'm sure your zoo is excellent. Keep trying, too. But secondly, Try to add little details that build the world. It really does help. Now I'm working on some lighting areas, because this zoo is going to be open during dark hours too, especially during the winter. That being said, we're going to need some lights. I have some floor lights to illuminate our welcome sign so people can take pictures of it even when the zoo is closing, and I added some pretty basic street lamps too. I really like how they look. We changed the color from black to gray, because I wasn't a fan of how dark the black ones were, but the gray ones are dark enough to where they look realistic, but not outrageous. After that, I went back into the main food court area and realized something was missing. I figured in real life, if this happened, guests would be pile-driving each other to try and get to the front of the line, because there was nothing to actually stop them from getting to the front of the line. That's why I added these guest ribbons. In the game's programming, guests cannot walk through these things, so you can actually dictate and influence their movement pretty effectively, kind of exactly how they're used in real life. In real life, most guests, unless you're some random entitled kid, aren't just going to bulldoze through guest barriers. After that, I simply decided to extend the path again, which side note, I really like the two colors of concrete and asphalt that we've been using. After I extended the path, I simply copy and pasted our little barriers over so the guests can't get through on this side either. Didn't necessarily need to do something crazy complex, so I actually just added it to the outside. Wasn't really sure what else to do here. I really like the effect, and I forgot to turn the lights on, so I had to do that now. Check it out, guys! I'm really happy with how it turned out. I wanted to add some picnic tables and other areas for guests to sit, but that's going to clash hard with the next episode. You guys are just going to have to trust me. I know it looks a little bare now, but once we get an exhibit over here, and it might be a pretty big one, it's going to work out in the end, I promise. Also, feel free to drop animal suggestions in the comments. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. So far, this zoo is turning out great, but our entrance still has a lot of work to get done. We need an information center, a security desk, all sorts of other things that the guests and staff are going to be able to use. I hope you guys are enjoying the slower pace of this series. The videos are a lot easier and more fun to make, to be honest. Taking detail really serious is honestly just such a fun way to play the game. I mean, just look at what we've done so far. Hopefully the complexity meter doesn't hate us too bad. Last time I checked it was at 7% which the standard entrance gives about 5%, so I think we're doing something really well. Overall, very happy with how the zoo's turning out so far. We're just gonna need to get a road out there soon. I think that's gonna be cool. Let me know what animals, buildings, episode ideas, or anything you'd like to see in this series is. No matter what you say, I'm gonna respond, even if I don't necessarily like the idea. But to be honest, that hasn't happened once in this channel yet. Even the craziest ideas are fun. That being said, I'll see you there. Kingpin out. See you in the next episode. Coming soon.